Hey guys, Nike here. The March 19th balance patch killed the most OP solo open world build that has ever existed, the Celestial Vindicator. While we are forced to say RIP to the greatest of all time, there is no need to despair though, since your gear will be completely transferable to the second best option out there, the original open world god tier build that is in fact better than ever, the Selly Herald. So what made the Vindicator better than the Herald? Simply put, the Vindicator was able to spam dodges and each dodge not only evaded incoming damage, but it also healed the player and extended the duration of the boons on them. This meant it had unparalleled defensive capabilities while having better damage potential than the Herald. But the Herald has caught up. The first hit was the Vindicator losing easy access to Vigor. It can still make close to perma vigor, but it requires spending energy to do so and careful use of dodges to maximize boon extension. Losing vigor means less dodges, less heals, and worse boon uptime. On the March 19th patch, the Vindicator lost the boon extension on dodge utility, which more or less kills the build for a solo environment since it no longer has perma uptime of every boon besides alacrity. Simultaneously, Herald has undergone some changes. Back in the old days when I made my original first solo Herald video, Herald didn't have access to quickness. The boon uptime on Herald is now significantly better. Additionally, the Salvation trait line has received several massive buffs to enhance sustain since that video was made. While the Vindicator at its peak was unarguably better, the Silly Herald is, is better now than it ever was before. If we can say that the old uh, Sully Vindicator was 10 out of 10 on sustain and damage, I would say the current uh, Sully Herald is 9 out of 10 on sustain and 10 out of 10 on damage. Few other builds can come close. Right now, many professions have incredibly powerful solo builds, but nothing is currently on the same level as this build. So. Let's get into it. All right, guys, for gear, we're gonna use full celestial in every slot. Um, for infusions, if you're gonna use infusions, go with full Condi damage infusions. For runes, we are going to go with Rune of the Trapper, and our relic will be Relic of the Fractal. I really had wanted to use a, a more defensive relic that would make up some of the defenses that we lost from the Vindi but there really wasn't a defensive or utility relic that added enough to be worth giving up the Fractal Relic's uh, big damage boost. Duena Relic would buff our regen, but it would only really add about 30-ish more health per tick, and that isn't so spectacular. Um, and the Caracosa Relic would have been amazing if the heal applied to ourselves, but it is only, unfortunately, for other allies, so Fractal Relic it is. Our weapons are going to be Mace Axe and Shortbow. On Mace Axe, our sigils will be Malice and Geomancy, while on Shortbow, we will use Malice and Torment. Most guides I've seen recommend Bursting Sigil instead of Malice, or Malice, but in every calculation I've done, Malice comes out ahead since the build does not otherwise hit uh, the Condi Duration cap. I could understand an argument that in short fights, perhaps bursting is, is better because the damage is more front loaded. But considering the point of this build is, you know, soloing bosses and, and longer fights, that uh, Malice will come out ahead. Uh, if there's something I'm missing, let me know in the comments below. And I should totally stress that the difference is minuscule. It's less than 100 DPS difference between Malice or bursting, whichever one you want to use. So if you already have bursting sigils, uh, and you don't want to buy anything else, be my guest, keep using the Bursting Sigils. It's not like it's like a night and day difference. It's just, you know, if you have legendary sigils, you might as well use the absolute best, even if it's only a few DPS. Um, as far as food goes, you should use uh, red lentil sabosas and toxic focusing crystals or the ascended version of the red lentil sabosas if that's your jam. And if you're on a budget, I use tuning icicles instead of the toxic focusing crystals because they are quite a bit cheaper and uh, I'm not really trying to min max, you know, open world stuff uh, to that degree. So with that said, uh, let's talk about traits. All right guys, let's talk traits. Uh, 
our traits are built to achieve striking a balance between sustain and damage output that tries to give us the optimal ability to handle any solo challenge. So we're going to take Corruption, Salvation, and Herald. In Corruption, we're going to take Acolyte of Torment to increase our Torment damage, Pact of Pain to do to get our Condi duration close to the cap, and then uh, Fiendish Tenacity, which is going to give us uh, a pretty fat 455 health per second heal, essentially the entire time that we're in Demon Stance for a bit of extra sustain on that side. In Salvation, we take uh, Eluding Nullification, Resilient Spirit, and Unyielding Devotion. Um, Nullification is pretty nice uh, because it gives us uh, a really nice Condi Cleanse um, when we dodge. And also when we dodge, uh, we also heal ourselves a little bit. So it makes our dodges uh, something that you want to use uh, tactically, not only to avoid damage, but also to you know remove poison, which would be probably the most important thing to remove but uh, also to give yourself a little heal if need be. But really, Resilient Spirit is the superstar of this trait line. Um, it gives us 1,450 barrier every three seconds, which is absolutely amazing for the build to sustain. Um, but the Grandmaster trait Unyielding Devotion is no slouch either. It gives us a very powerful 15% damage reduction that stacks additively with protection which will make us uh, significantly tankier. So you can see that the, uh, the traits here are, are built to give us that tankiness. And then we move to Herald. We take Elder's Respite, Shared Empowerment, and Elevated Compassion. Elder's Respite is super nice. Uh, it gives us a nice boost to our regen, which again makes us gives us more sustain. Shared Empowerment ensures that we are able to make 25 might on ourselves in a fight at all times and Elevated Compassion. Um, unfortunately, the healing uh, from Elevated Compassion doesn't apply to ourselves. If we got uh, the 174 health every time we pulsed a boon, we'd be doing, on ourselves, we'd be doing pretty good. But unfortunately, that only heals other players, um, not us. However, it's still a very OP Grandmaster trait because it gives us uh, perma quickness, and perma quickness is where a lot of our damage comes from. So, uh, with that said, um, you have the build in front of you, and now I want to tell you exactly kind of how to play it. So the rotation for this build is a lot more simple than it appears or it sounds initially, and you'll see what I mean when you get a chance to play it. Essentially, you want to be on Mace while on Herald and Shortbow while on Demon, and you want to swap to Demon after every other facet of elements. So you're going to use facet of elements and strength twice per Herald swap. Um, but then when you're on Demon, you want to swap back to Herald on cooldown. In Mace, two, in Mace, skill 2 and 3 are your bread and butter. Not only do they do your best damage, but they also help you stack Might. And while in uh, Herald Stance, you want to run Facet of Chaos, Facet of Darkness, and Facet of Light. Obviously, like I said, you're going to use Strength and Elements on cooldown. And Facet of Nature should be activated and consumed at a convenient time to extend your boons before swapping uh, off of Herald in place of an auto attack. In Shortbow and Demon, you want to make sure you activate Embrace the Darkness uh, immediately on swap to keep your quickness up and to get your resistance uh, proc. Skill four and three are your best damage dealers with skill two being a nice filler. That's an upgrade from the auto attack. You always want to use skill four before skill three, uh, even if it means delaying skill three by a second or two because the combo finisher of seven arrows in the fire field adds a ton of free damage. Every swap, you will only be able to do the four and three combo once, but when you go back to Herald, you can use it a second time before swapping to Mace. I know this all sounds complicated, but it really makes good logical sense when you play with it a bit, and uh, you'll pick it up pretty quickly. Lastly, I do want to mention that this build is for challenging solo content that you can't necessarily fight like a golem. There will be fights or times when being in melee range is simply not reasonable, even with all the sustain that we have at our fingertips. In those cases, by all means, camp shortbow if it enables you to get the job done.
So that's it guys. I hope you really do dig this build. Please give it a try. Let me know how you like it and leave that those thoughts in the comments below. I'll see you next time and uh, catch you later.